Hello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, hi. Uh, my name is Catherine Elizabeth, and this again is Motivational Monday. How are you? Hope you're all well. Um, if you're watching this on replay, then please put hashtag replay into the comments below because that's always good to see who's actually watching it on replay. Um, and also, please put thumbs up and likes if you like what you're hearing. And um, write any comments below. Ask me anything, and I'm here to help you. Okay, today we've got five millinery hacks. So it's five millinery technique hacks. So it's about making hats sort of millinery tips um, they're not huge because I would have to then if they were huge things I'd have to go into actually showing you how to do it but I want to be able to tell you so I've just got a few props here to go through it all with you so five millinery hacks um, we've got one this is the hat block you can buy an ordinary hat block which is a 22 inch or 22 and a half inch crown this one is a multi-block, so this one I can take the top off and I can put the other one on. I got this from Guy Morse Brown, this one, and this is a 22 and a half inch. And the reason why I've got that is because by the time you join a crown and brim together, it makes it 22 inches. So the average head size is always 22 inches. If you go and buy a hat in the shops, they'll always be 22 inches. It's not like shoes where you have loads of different sizes. So sort of the, the average shop size is 22. But when you've got clients coming in and you've got things to make for them, then you need to make it specifically for their head size. Um, that's why they come to a milliner, so that they can have it made properly. If you're making a headpiece, it doesn't matter so much. But if you've got an actual crown, sort of this section here, and then you're joining it to a brim, the bit that sticks out here, say a trilby or something else, you need to make them both match, so they need to be, they need to have the head size the same, um, and also you need to do it in a 22 and a half inch, because then by the time you join the bits together, you'll end up with a 22. So if you've never made crown and brim hats before, and you only ever made headpieces or fascinators, but you wanna have a go at making those, then get yourself a brim, get yourself a crown, and make sure they're at least 22 and a half inches. So, I'm sure if you get them from Guy Morse, I think, and this is what happened to me, so I think it's still the same, he'll just send you out 22 and a half inch average, sort of, that's that's the standard you'll send out, unless you say to him, well, I want a different size. So if you do want a smaller one or you want a bigger one, ask him. Otherwise, you should get a 22 and a half inch. You can always check it with him. This one's a multi-block, like I say, because I can take the top off and I can put another on. When I first bought this, I thought that was really good and it's been useful all the way through my hat career because then I can put a flat top on this or I can have a slanted top or I've got another one as well with a bit of a dip in it. And it was more expensive than one block, but less expensive than buying four separate styles. So I paid, this is about 20 years ago, I paid around £225 for four tops and then this is one and then the stand is one. And if I bought these individually, it would have cost me about 400 So it is cheaper to do that. So if you can spend that little bit extra, you end up saving money at the end of the day. And that was really good. So my tip is to always go with a 22 and a half inch crown block and get the multi-block if you can. If not, you can just get a normal crown block. You can also get them from eBay, um, you can get them from Highland Hat Blockers, there's other companies abroad. Um, there are, I'm not sure if I remember the names, but there are a few other companies springing up, but the, the main ones I know of are Guy Morse Brown and Highland Hat Blockers. Guy Morse is the wood and Highland Hat Blockers is more of the styrofoam. Also, another tip to go with this one is when you're blocking, just in case you're really new at this, if you're blocking on this, you're going to get your cinema fabric, which is my little hat that I've got here, my halo. This is cinema, and if you're going to get that as a raw in its raw state, and you're going to pull it over the block, never do it straight onto the wood because it'll stick, and then you'll end up having to rip it off. Because the cinema has a glue in it, it's a stiffener that it has in it, and if you steam it and wet it and put it on here and it dries, it'll stick to the block because this is porous and it'll soak in, and then you'll end up ripping the hat off and ruining your hat. So always put cling film or a bag, so you can just get a clear bag, pull that over and keep that on and then block on top of that. So that's my tip, always do that. I um, as well use for recycling what reasons I, I use um, old bags. You know when we had thinner bags than we do now, I would have used those, but I can't use the thicker ones so much because they make the dents. But if you've got any old thin bags left in the back of your cupboard, get them out and use them to cover your blocks. 
but turn them inside out because otherwise, say if it's a, a Sainsbury's bag or a Waitrose bag or something, the, the print that's on it will go onto your hat. So if you turn it inside out, then the print will stick to your block rather than to your hat. I remember Catherine Delaney telling me that because more plastic to put on it. So, and she said, turn the bag inside out so that the, then the marks will go onto your block instead of onto your hat. You don't want them on your hat. You don't particularly want them on your block either. So it's better to have just clear. But if you, if all you've got is those or you want to use them, then feel free. But it also makes it a little bit more unique, you know, to you. So it's your particular block. I mean, I've got some prints going on here and dyes and... Um, my marks and pinholes. I've had this for about 20 years. Look how many pinholes are in it. But I just love it because it's mine and it's, um, you know, been worn and it's my thing. So that's tip number one. That was a long tip. Um, tip number two, if you want to make this bigger, so if you've got, this is a 22 and a half inch block. If I wanted to make this into a, a 23 inch block because my client has got a bigger head, then I would get a piece of felt, buy a piece of felt, millinery felt in a hood, put that on the block and steam that on the block to fit. That will make it bigger by half an inch. And then I put my plastic bag on and then I get whatever it is, my cinema or my other piece of felt and block on top of that. And then that will make that a 23. And then if I'm doing a crown and a brim again, it'll bring it in by half an inch and that'll bring it back to 22 and a half. So you can see if you've got clients with different head sizes, then you have to work out sort of how to get it to the right head size for them. If I was blocking a headpiece and I was thinking, well, they've got a 23 inch head, even though it doesn't matter so much because the headpiece will fit. But if they've got quite a large head and you wanted this to be um, the hat to be 23 inches, say it was covering quite a lot of the head. Um, 23 inches then you'd have to make this a 23 no 23 is good sorry 23 is good because then you know you're just doing this section and you can block this out to 23 using your felt and then you can block on it to get your 23 inch crown section if that's, that's all you want but if you're joining the crown section to a brim you've got those two bits that are meeting together and that brings it in again by half an inch so just remember that also, when you're putting Petersham in, it brings it in again. And when you're putting in lining, it brings it in again. So all of these things are going to make it smaller and smaller. So you have to either stretch it back out again or just think about what head size they are. Maybe you want it smaller, so you don't need to stretch it out because you want to bring it in. So it just that's the only things you, you really need to think about when blocking. If you're doing headpieces or fascinators, it doesn't matter so much. So yeah, so if you want to stretch your hat block out, put felt on it. Um, top hats, I was going to show you this. So this is a new little block that I've got, which I've ordered in for my guys in the Millinery Academy. Love this one. This is our little top hat. So cute. But this is quite an unusual and hard block to use. So if you get your cinema, so you've got something like this with a slant, it's going in a bit here. So it's actually thinner and smaller in here than it is here. And then so it's going in and out again. Um, if you've got something like this and you're blocking cinema on it, you'll find that you'll stretch the cinema and then it'll go down like that and you'll have this gap in between and you want it to suck around here. Um, and then you pull this side and you're like, ah, why is it not working? Okay, right, I'm going to pull this in here with my hands and put a few pins in and then you're pulling out again and then bits will be pulling out and bits will be going in. So what you could use is elastic bands just here to keep it down but then that shows a bit of a mark because you want this to be all smooth and you don't want a dent. So you can try elastic bands or you can try a thin piece of elastic. But if you see that it's denting, then you need to use something else. So the elastic band also will sit in the middle here and you've still got this bit. So you want it to really fit. So what I'd say is get something like a piece of Petersham. So you've, you've blocked most of it, but you've left a little gap here. You haven't made it extremely tight here, so it could still suck in, but you've just done most of it. Then you can get a piece like this to go around the back here. And then you can pin that in place there, and then you can pull it around here, and you can just put those bits over and then pull it nice and tight and pin it in. And that just brings this bit in and then you and you pin it and then you can work on making this more perfect. So get it roughly in place, get this sort of smooth 
but not completely tight because you want it to be able to pull back a little bit. Then put, then steam it again, put this on, pull this tight, pin it here, pin it here, and then start working on this section here. And that just helps to keep it in a bit. And then when you've got a funny block like this one, and you're thinking, well, how am I going to get the grooves in? Because again, you'll block here and then it will just go straight. You won't dip in. So you want to keep it in there. You'll put some pins in, but it might be a little bit ruckly. So what you could do oops, is get some string. But for this one, you probably want string a bit thicker than this. So if you have a really thin groove, you can use string. Um, and this can then go around there. So I'm trying to look at what I'm doing and look at you guys. So this can go around there and then pull it really tight and then you can put pins in here just to sort of suck it into that bit. So you've blocked most of it, then you pin in there to suck that in. Also you could do one here. Um, but the easier thing with one like this, because this is quite wide, is to get thicker rope. So if you have like a much thicker piece than this, then good. Or you can get fabric and you can just go like that and you're making a sort of rope thing. And then that can go in there and then you'll pin that down and you'll pin that in. So you can block it as best you can, then you steam it again and you push this down, pin it down and this helps to keep it all in place. It's because I used to wonder, you know, how they did it, how they, before I learned, how um, that stays in like that. And I used to also use wadding so you can actually, I think it was Catherine Delaney, I think told me this, it might not have been. Um, you can get lots of sort of paper wadding and then you can cover that in sellotape and then you can push all of that in. Also cloth, you can push all of the cloth in. But if you just get this and you do it like a knot, then that works really well to sort of keep it in. So that's a tip. So millinery tips this week, which you don't normally have, do we? We're normally having all business tips and motivation tips. So I thought we'd do some millinery to get us in the mood for the hat challenge. Number five is what Trish was saying. I'm always preaching on that you can actually make things out of anything in your home. You don't have to spend a lot of money on hat blocks unless you want a particular brim or a particular crown, then you'll need to do it. But if you want to make fun things, then you can make something out of like this. So this is my little bowl. So I can make a little hat from this and I can put it on. So what I do is stretch my cinema all the way over. I can't put pins in, but I put elastic bands on or I could pull something like that around it just to keep it in place um you know put elastic band here push it up inside whatever you can do to keep that on do it and that's your little block also I've made loads of hats out of things like this so this is just a jar that we've got our seeds in um this is great so yeah, I've made little top hats um I've made sort of you know Jackie O'Nass's pill boxes but a baby little pill box so it can just be that deep you know, block it all, put your elastic band here, easy done. You can put some tape on to keep it down. Um, steam it all and then um, put stiffener on it. When you take it off, make sure you've got a bit of excess so the excess can push up inside and then that makes it all nice and then you can wire it just in here. So say if you blocked it to here and then you've got a bit of excess to here, you could push this up inside so you end up back to here and then you can wire it inside here not the not the glass but the actual cinema that you've blocked so you can do that um you know the little one cups plates where's my plate things like this it can be little button ones you can even do it that way or you could have it like that It'd be quite cool uh this one you know cups the bottom of cups that could be quite interesting uh, teapots and things and I've got this lovely little lid I mean wouldn't that be cute all that could be on the top of another hat so say if we've got something going on here then we could put that on here or we could have it raised up or slightly off and you can start making funny hats it's just nice to see the things you've got around the house and start using them the only problem is like I say you can't pin into them but you can use elastic bands and tape and whatever you can to keep it on also, um, you can um, make blocks out of these. So say if I got some chicken wire and I pulled that around here and then I plaster casted it, when I pull it off, I've got myself a block. 
you can use clay you know to go to, to make block out of you can get clay you know it's all wet you can make your own block fire that then you've got your your clay block um I haven't done any I haven't made one of those myself but I know you can or also you could just plaster cast this you could put um plastic bag on it and then plaster cast over that so I've done that before um probably told you before I don't know if all of you have heard though of getting a wok and putting spray foam in the wok and then waiting for that to dry and then you could shave off the bit that you don't need take it out of the block and then you've got a nice brim block so that's a good idea so anything like that, anything you've got lying around. Uh, I don't know if I've got any other objects lying on the table, but you know, any old thing. So I mean, this could have just been some sort of lid and you don't need to be buying it out of wood, but it's much easier because you can get your pins in if you can afford it. But I don't want you to limit yourself because you're not sure about blocks or how much they cost and things like that. So that's number five, but then also I've got number six, got extra so when you're um when you're making your hats so you've had it for ages or if your client brings you a hat and they've wrecked it a bit because they've dented it and you think oh no what am i going to do with this now they've dented it they think it's like forever um finished they think it's like no good anymore what am i going to do with this oh no i've sat on it so you then just use steam get some steam and put the spot steam underneath so the steam boils through the hat and then you can gently gently push it back into shape so that's really useful because once you've blocked the hat in that shape and you put stiffener on it, it has a bit of a memory. So then when you steam it, it comes back to that shape. You have to manipulate it a little bit with some hats to get them back into shape. Um, also, if you've got, say, silk flowers, because anything organic, silk flowers or feathers, if they look a bit dead, then, you know, they've been squashed. Not If they're broken, then that's another thing. But if they're just a little bit squashed because they've been sat in a box for ages and now the petals are squashed together or the feathers just look a little bit bleh, then just use steam again to get it back to life. But if they're covered in dust, before you steam it, just get a hairdryer and blow off the dust or go outside and flick it out a bit. Get the dust off first and then use steam to bring it back to life. You'll see the petal, if it's all squished, and you just put it over the kettle or a steamer and then the, the petal will just open up and it's just amazing how it just comes back to life. So anything silk or anything feather or anything natural will do that and it will come back to life. So yeah, so that's number six. So I'll see you again next week. If there's anything specific you want to know about business wise, um, not necessarily all hat tips because they're in my academy, more hat tips. Uh, but uh, in this, um, Facebook group I can give you more tips on business motivation um, yeah anything else you, you're thinking of you want um, you know PR tips or website tips or anything to, to grow a business or motivate you or get you making then let me know and I can then put that into my list of um, ideas for motivational Monday all right, I'll see you again next week, but I'll also see you in the group because I pop in and see what you're doing. And I like to see you know, what you're up to. Um, and if you have any questions, just ask away and hashtag me in on it. Um, bye from the man. Oh, poorly. <laughs> I'll see you again soon. Bye.